All right, Jasmine. Jasmine, uh, where are you from originally? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in a suburb around like 20 minutes outside of Portland, Oregon. So that's where I was born and raised. Um, both of my parents are immigrants from Iran. So uh, they were born over there. I was born, they came, my dad came after the revolution in 1979. And then my mom came just a couple years before I was born. Um, my mom's a lawyer, my dad's an engineer. I had a very traditional, I would say, Iranian American immigrant life in the sense of like very rigid academic expectations. Um, I used to literally get my phone taken away if I got like a B. <laughs> so like it was like straight A's. Um, you know, the whole what do you want to be when you grow up is kind of like, OK, do you want to be a lawyer, doctor, engineer? Like there isn't much of like, what are you passionate about? You know, I was actually passionate about psychology. So that's what I actually majored in in college. And my parents were like, that's fine, but you have to go get a Ph.D. So it's like, you know, um, yeah. So I was like, all right, well, I'm scared of blood, so I don't want to be a doctor. I don't like math, so I don't want to be an engineer. My mom's a lawyer and school kind of comes easily to me. So, I mean, intelligence is multifaceted, but school for me was always, I, I'm book smart. So it was not that hard. And then um, went to college, graduated summa cum laude 4.0, took the LSAT, scored within, I don't know what percent, but like well within the top 10%. So got a full ride scholarship to a great law school and was like, okay, I guess I'm going to be a lawyer. Um, I, it's never like what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was just like, okay, it was like kind of just going through the motions. So I liked having, or I felt comfortable having like a path set out. Okay. Especially if it's based on tests. Okay. Take the LSAT. Cool. Okay. You got into the school. School is going to be how law school works is your whole grade is just based on your final exam. So I was like, great, I can kind of fuck around all semester and then just cram <laughs> in the last couple of weeks, have a mental breakdown, do well, and then do it all again. So I was, I was fine with all of that. And I like school. I like learning. But I was always like, I don't want to graduate. I was looking for ways to not graduate in the sense of like, well, what if I go get an LLM, stay another year? Like trying to find ways to do more schooling because I just, the thought of actually practicing or going, this is gonna sound, and I still feel this way, and I felt this way at the time too, that I'm just being spoiled. And part of it maybe is, like I just didn't wanna get up every day and go to a nine to five and have like billable hours. I had grown up seeing my mom work at a big firm and she was um, at work usually till about eight or 9 p.m. Um, and I just didn't have like that kind of ambition. So as graduation was nearing and everyone else is super excited to graduate, I feel like like in college you will get people who are like, oh, um, you know, I don't know what to do when I graduate. But in law school, like everyone is ready to go. Like they're, they have a mission, they're there, they want to get licensed and they're ready to practice. And I was just it's like dreading it. And COVID hit um, in the middle of my 2L year, which is like your second year. So law school's three years. And so then we were like online and I didn't even fully connect it at the time, but like my mental health was kind of like deteriorating because I was just like every single event in my life or anything I was looking at, I was looking at it. Okay, is this before I graduate or after I graduate? It's like I thought I was going to die <laughs> after I graduated. It was very weird, but it's because I was like, there is nothing I want to do that involves me being like having a normal job. And even though I was like, there are fields I'm interested in, like I could even work for a nonprofit, go into the public sector. I mean, then I was worried that I wouldn't um, make good money and I did want to make money, but also like, I just don't want that life. Um, but being a lawyer wasn't for you. Being a lawyer just wasn't for me. And, but then it's like almost any job where you're going in, the alarm goes off, it's Monday morning, you go into the office, happy Monday, happy Friday. Like, I just didn't want that, but I was like, okay, I don't think anyone else wants that either. This is just life, this is just reality. You're being spoiled. You were born pretty much with a silver spoon in your mouth. You've had everything given to you. So now you're gonna sit here and complain about this. So I was like, okay, I guess this is just life. Like, I guess this is just gonna be, you know, what it is. 
And so graduated in May of 2021. Bar was in July of 2021. Uh, I think that's when I discovered your videos and I literally had like soft white underbelly and then like my bar prep like in two different tabs on my um, on my laptop. And I was like, okay. And you, you, between May and July, what most law students do is all you do is study for the bar. And I, I study last minute. So I was like, well, what do I do in the meantime? I had a friend in law school who started like a secret OnlyFans <laughs> and she was telling me about it. And I was like, wait, I got really curious about it. So I had heard of it in like 2020 in like the midst of the pandemic, like everyone was talking about how OnlyFans was blowing up. At that time, I had no social media. I didn't have an Instagram. I didn't have a Facebook. Like I haven't had social media before I started OnlyFans since like MySpace when I was like in middle school. So it just didn't seem like something I could ever do because I'm like, I don't even like know how to use the internet. I barely still know how to use the internet to be fair. Um, But I saw she had done it and I'm like, well, how do you do it? Like, where do you post? And she's like, oh, I post on Reddit. And I I had heard of Reddit, but I didn't like know what it is. And so I kind of asked her how she did it. And then the nice thing about how I started was it was so low pressure because I didn't need to be doing it. Like, it was just kind of like, I actually remember there were these shoes I wanted that were like $500 and my parents weren't going to buy them for me. Because up until that point, my parents had been like funding my life. My dad had actually just bought me a house. Super low pressure. All I need is this $500 so I can buy these shoes. And you know how like if you make more than $600, it gets like report. I was like, okay, I'm not even going to make $600. So who cares? And um, I started on Reddit and I made that in like the first... 24 hours. Um, I like just posted in like busty brunettes or something and it did really well. So I was like, oh, okay. So then I just kind of was like studying for the bar, watching Soft White Underbelly and doing my OnlyFans. That's all I was doing for like a month. <laughs> and it, it did really well. Like my, my OnlyFans was doing, especially for like it being brand new, me having no social media presence, me just using Reddit. And Reddit is still my main platform, like millions of followers on there. Um, And so I took the bar and then it was like, okay, well, what now? And I was like, well, I'm making all this money now. I'm just going to put off getting a job. And I would just tell my parents, oh, it's COVID. Like no one's hiring. Like, you know, Um, but then uh, from an old like externship I did, somebody reached out and they're like, this person's hiring. You should go. And I remember I was like, fuck, because I knew I couldn't justify not going. (laughs) Um, so I was like, okay, I probably won't get it anyway. And I literally had like long, like just, I didn't look professional. And even in law school, I was always different. I would go to law school like this. Like I would wear crop tops. Um, there's like a running joke I have with like me and my friends from law school that like nobody would have expected me to do this. But if there was like a graduation, like most likely to, and if there was like a category for most likely to quit law and do only, f- I would win it. Like <laughs> hands down, I would win it, even though it's still such a like crazy move. Um, but I was like, you know, always coming in late. I'd sit in the back. I had my little heels. I'd bring like banana bread from Starbucks for like all my friends. Like I was just, I didn't, I always had a little bit of an, I don't give a fuck attitude. I always had a little bit of that I wasn't rebellious in the sense of like, I never got in trouble, like nothing like that. I don't drink, I don't do drugs. But I kind of also was like, well, why can't I wear this to school? Like, okay, so people might think it's weird, you know, and and in in those settings, no one's gonna like say anything to you. They're just gonna like think it. And honestly, it actually made me, um, like I know I got certain jobs and opportunities because like, like for instance, I'd clerk for a judge and the judge just liked me because I was different because I didn't come in with like a cookie cutter little suit in my briefcase and sit there and be like, okay, well, here's my accomplishments. Like I was just come in and I was just myself and I was different. And that's something, especially nowadays, schools are looking for, um, firms are looking for, judges are even looking for. So I actually always did well and I did well in school. So like, even though I looked so different, my reputation was kind of like, she might not even come to class. If she does come to class, she's going to come like pretty much in a bikini, but she's going to do well. Like I will do well on the exam and that's all that really um, mattered. But anyway, so I got the job on the spot and I don't think anyone was 
more sad to get a job in their life. You didn't want it. No, because at that point I was already making like five times what I was going to make as a starting salary, even in the private sector, as an even like big law money. Like I was already, so I was like, I don't need to do this. But at the same time, like I was like, well, what am I going to do? Like not be a lawyer and do OnlyFans? Like that's crazy. Like not doing that. So I remember I actually called my sister because she knew. And I was like, I got this job. And she's like, good, thank God. Now mom and dad can like relax. I'm like, but I don't want <laughs> I'm like, but I don't want it. She's like, are you fucking stupid? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, fine, do OnlyFans, but just do both. And I was like, oh, okay. So now this was like October and I was doing a double life. It was so weird. I would be in the office, like normal business hours. A lot of that point I was like shadowing, learning, whatever. But then I'd come home and like do OnlyFans, like stuff with toys, take news. And I would spend a lot of my weekends curating um, content for the rest of the week um, because it was very important to me to be consistent and to, because I was like, this is a business. Like if I want to keep making this money, I have to keep, I can't just. OnlyFans is a lot of work. Yeah, it is. Um, I've heard. It is. So I would spend like all my weekends doing that. And then I come back into the office on Monday and everyone's like, what'd you do this weekend? And all the other like, oh, I went and saw the opera. Like, you know, just (laughs) those kind of people. And I'm like, oh, I just, you know, had like a chill, relaxing weekend. But when I'm like looking back, I'm like sucking dildos, like just (laughs) all kinds of shit. And nobody knew. Um, I was always worried that they would find out. And so every time like my boss would like, tell me to come into her office or something. I'm like, she knows. Like, <laughs> This is the moment they found about my OnlyFans. Um, and so I did that for like six or seven months. And then I was just like sitting there one day and I'm like, why am I here? And I was at this point, like my growth was like, when I started, it was going up and up and up. And then once I started working that like six, seven months, it was stagnant because I just, I wasn't able to like, you know, spend a lot of time on it and look for opportunities to grow, try out other platforms. I was even scared to try other platforms because I'm like, okay, Reddit is kind of underground. Like you have to be looking for this kind of content on Reddit to find it. So I'm like, okay, even if like a client like recognizes me, what are they gonna be like? I was looking at busty brunettes on Reddit and I found you. Like there, you know, it's just like, it's kind of like, okay, underground thing. But I didn't want to start any other forms of social media. I didn't want to get, put my name out there. I didn't want to bring my story into it. And that is a lot of success, I think, with platforms like OnlyFans. Like it is the physical, but if you look at like the top earners on OnlyFans, a lot of them um, are like social media personalities. Like they're streamers, they, they, um, they interact and you need time to interact. You need time to go live. You need time to do all that. So I was like, okay, I'm literally waking up every day. I'm losing money to go to work, which like imagine your alarm going off in the morning and all you can think of is like, I'm gonna make less money by getting out of bed right now. It was horrible. Everyone at my firm was super nice. And actually like a couple, uh, I mean, I didn't tell everybody, but a, a couple of them know and they're super supportive. But that was also a thing is I'm like, I've. If any, if this was even a little bit worse, I would just quit. But this is like as good of an experience I can get as a first year associate. Like no mean partners, everybody's nice. Work-life balance is great. They're not even worried about my billables right now. Like I don't, ha- I felt like I didn't have an excuse to quit. And I also think that there was part of me that was like, I have to have one foot in this door as it was like comforting. It's like, okay, yeah, I do OnlyFans, but I'm really a lawyer. My career is still a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. You still have your dignity. I still have, yeah, I have my dignity, if you want to say, we can get into that. But I could like go out and just be a lawyer and just have like a secret OnlyFans. And there was still like comfort in that. Um, And then one day I was sitting there and I was like, okay, what are the actual reasons you're still here, right? And I actually made a physical list and I realized all of them had to do with other people. Like all of them had to do with other people. And then there was like, you know, the common, what are you gonna do in 10 years? And I'm like, well, hopefully not be in an office. And starting my OnlyFans was kind of like the first thing I really did that no one else told me to do. Because my whole life it's like, okay, go get good grades. Okay, go take this test. Okay, go go to school. Okay, get a job, apply. Okay, whatever, you know? Um, and this was the first thing that I just kind of was like, I'm gonna do this, why not? 
And at this point, my parents knew. So I kind of told, I told my mom. Um, and I was really close with both of my parents, especially my dad. Um, common misconception that we all have daddy issues. I definitely do not. <laughs> if anything, my dad spoiled, like my dad really spoiled you, me. You, to go back to your childhood for a second, you, yeah. you had a great childhood. Great childhood. Uh, both parents in my life, very close with both of them. No um, sexual abuse, nothing like that. Nothing. You, you're just. Oh, a, you're I wasn't even allowed. Like my parents. I mean, the only I was. They were just strict. Like even now, if I go home, like I can't be out all night. Like I have to be home by like midnight. Growing up, my parents. I wasn't allowed to go on sleepovers because they were afraid someone else. <laughs> right? So that's very common, even in our our culture. Like they don't let you like even go out and and because they're so afraid that someone's gonna murder you or you know, whatever. But super involved, both my parents, especially my dad, because my mom worked such long hours. My dad was like, you know, I had one of those childhoods. Okay, piano practice is six, skating practice is seven, Farsi school <laughs> Persian at a Sunday morning. Like we had like those jam packed swimming lessons. I've taken it all, art classes, everything. My dad would take us. Um, uh, and he was super involved. Like my dad did most of the cooking, cleaning, super. Like I remember every time he'd go to work and they had like muffins, he would bring one home for me, one home for my sister. He would wake up in the middle of the night when we were kids multiple times a night and come put the covers on us. Um, we really like, especially me, because my sister, at least for undergrad, she went, um, she wanted to like start becoming more independent. I was like, I don't. So I actually, even in law school, my first year, because I never had like washed dishes. I would just throw them away and buy <laughs> new ones. <laughs> like I actually, I, I'm, I'm still, it's very difficult for, I don't know, I don't have those basic like, I remember it was like what, a couple months ago that this is gonna sound so stupid, but I didn't realize when you vacuum something, like the vacuum still, ha like I thought it like disappeared <laughs> into the metaverse or something. I had no idea um, how those like household things work because my dad, always did that for us like he cooked for us I still don't know how to cook um DoorDash every meal um and he you know when I was moving even he drove my car he unpacked everything like he is such a good dad to the point where like I I know everyone says oh I have the best parents in the world like my dad might actually be the best parent in the world not saying my mom isn't but my dad just goes above and beyond to the point where when I was growing up, like, I mean, until recently, he was still like making our dentist appointments and stuff. But I remember like everywhere we went, like I'd go to the dentist, I'd go to the doctor. Every single um, person would say, your dad loves you and your sister so much. Like he was just known for being, for loving us that much. Like when we go to daycare, after school programs and stuff, Everyone knew my dad because he'd be calling a bunch of times like, are you guys, you guys have to pick her up from school? And they're like, yes, we know, you know, the first time we did it, he actually followed the car, made sure that he's like, I saw you get in the bus. Like he was very hands on and he was great and he was so amazing. So that was the one and it still is the biggest point of contention with what I do is how much it disappointed him. Do you feel guilt? I feel guilt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and with my mom, I, I was just like, so I told her because I was just so afraid of the secret coming out. And if I, if it was going to come out, I wanted to come out on my own terms. That's one thing about me. I don't like giving other people the opportunity to like ruin my day. Like if anyone's going to ruin my day, it's going to be me. I didn't want to like, you know, be woken up at 2 AM by my mom, like finding this out. Like, I don't understand how, I mean, to each their own, but people who like live with someone and sleep and they have like full blown affairs. Like I just it would disrupt my peace too much because I'd be so afraid that my life is going to be flipped upside down at any moment. I don't know when. And then I just look fucking dumb because it, I, I did something and I just wasn't honest about it. So I had told my mom. Does your dad know how much you make? Uh, yes. Now he does. Or he knows like the ballpark. Um, but. Which is impressive. Yeah. And and now. <laughs> use, your, use your wildest imagination and then double it. He. He literally now, like every time I talk to him, he's like, save your money, save your money, save your money, save your money. Like now he's just so worried that I'm not going to blow the money, um, which is a big shift from how it first started. So I told her I was actually angry about something. And I think I used that anger to like, not at her. I was angry about something else, but I was riled up 
and I had the courage in that moment because I was so full of emotion. So I called her, I was like, no, 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 I have an OnlyFans. <laughs> and she's like, what? And the only reason she knew what an OnlyFans was was because like, I think Christmas break one year, I like went home and I was telling her about it and she was like appalled. Cause my parents, I would say they're not conservative compared to other maybe Middle Eastern households. Like, you know, we weren't super religious. I didn't like go to a mosque growing up. Like. I mean, I couldn't wear like short shorts and stuff, but generally like they were what, but compared to like American households, like, yeah, I couldn't go places as much. They is, had- Is the Iranian culture more conservative? With conservative. This? So like, for instance, my mom didn't like date or touch or hold hands with anyone until she met my dad. Like she, she used to tell me like tampons are for married women, like very much like the, okay, you need to keep your hymen intact until <laughs> until your wedding night. Like, they just grew up like that. So I wasn't allowed to have, I, I had a where, boyfriend. Where, where were you exposed to this wild sexual life? When was I exposed to this? Yeah, how, how did you? I, mean, I don't have a wild sexual life. Well, you're. <laughs> I mean, only fans, but uh, before that I didn't. Um, so I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend. Like I couldn't have a boyfriend. And then I got my Do you first have a boyfriend now? No, but I did have one when I was like 19, was like when I had my first boyfriend and I still had to be home. Oh my God, he was a great boyfriend because he would drive 40 minutes because my parents also were like, you can't drive at night by yourself because someone's gonna kill you. So he had to drive 40 minutes, pick me up and then drive me to his house. And then I had to be home at 12. So then he would have to drive <laughs> me back at 12. We could never spend the night together. Um, and this went on until I moved. I still like, you know, so they were strict in, in that sense. And they, I think even now they don't understand that pornography, like they think pornography is like, like a bikini. Like, I don't think they even know cause they're just not internet savvy. Um, that people actually like have sex. Like maybe they have an abstract idea, <laughs> but I don't think they really get it because like, my mom, like, if you see, like, J-Lo in a bikini, she's like, oh, I don't want to see these nudes. I'm like, it's on a magazine. <laughs> this is not, this is not nudes. Um, Your parents will have a heart attack. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think even now they fully know, but they know I'm doing something bad. Let's just say that. They know it's bad. She freaked out. She actually didn't talk to me. Um, and my mom had never done that. Never. I remember I called her office, and she, like, purposely didn't answer. And she never in her life had done that. So I was like, oh shit. Um, and at the time my dad was actually visiting cause this was actually, so she found out before the bar and my dad was like bringing me fruit bowls. Like, okay, do you need anything else to study? And I'm like, no. And I was like mortified, like, okay, you know, you need to focus on this test, but I really didn't want my dad to know. But I also knew that like, if I'm gonna keep doing this, like how is he not gonna know, right? So my mom and my sister, and I, I guess they all had this family meeting, which I didn't know at the time, but I could kind of guess because the way that my dad called me and like spoke, I was like, he didn't come up with this on the fly. Like, um, and I think they had my dad call me because they knew that if anyone could change my mind, it would be my dad. Like my dad's the only one that could make me stop doing this. So he calls me and he's like, I know what you're doing. Very disappointed in you. I don't know why you're doing this because this is for people that come from X background. This is for people that have, you know, don't have money, don't have a good family. Um, clearly somebody got in your head and someone's a bad influence on you because obviously you would never choose to do this. You just don't know um, what you're doing, but you know what? It's okay. Just stop now, donate all the money to charity. I think on that one, they might've like been like, fine, even if you don't want to, but he's like, donate all the money to charity, stop now and go, back on the right path, but like in the right accent, like go back on the right path. And I'm like, and I just remember sitting there listening to him and I was just like, no. And I was even shocked when I said that because I had never said that. And even my dad's like, what? I was like, no. I'm like, I don't want to. I'm like, I like this and this is, but at the time I was like, but I'm still a lawyer, right? Like I'm still working and da 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 da. It's just something I'm doing on the side. It's totally fine. Everybody does it like trying to <laughs> um, lessen the blow. But it was the first time that it's like every fiber of my being is like, you can't do that. Because I think I knew like you have this window, you have this opportunity 
that you can get out of that nine to five life that you've always wanted, that you didn't think was possible, it could be possible. So, so you, you must get offers of, of... In person? Oh, all the time. You mean like people, people want you to show up at their doorstep? Oh yeah, I mean, it, and, I, and I get it. People just assume because you're doing online sex work that, okay, you would probably do in person for the right price. You, you so, don't do that? I don't. I've what, what, never what kind of offers have you had? Um, oh, anything. I, I like have so many people abroad who offer me like 250,000, 100,000. The most I ever got was 400,000 for just one night. And they're like, I like these super, super wealthy men who just, you know, um, from, like Arab, Arab from Arab countries. Because there's like a thing, like a lot of, um, like I said, there's not a lot of Middle Eastern girls doing this. So there's like these Arab guys who love like Persian women and they're like, Oh my God, you're like my dream girl. I will pay, just give me the price. I just want one night with you. So I get crazy offers for in person. Um, I just don't take them, not because I have a moral issue with it. I would just, it would just make me uncomfortable. Um, you're, but making, you're making enough as is. Exactly, which is crazy. It's crazy that I literally can sit there and rationalize, like, I don't really need that <laughs> 250000 Like, it'd be nice. I'm not saying it wouldn't be, but it's not something that I would, like, fly to another country for or, like, I just couldn't picture myself actually. Like, I would have to, like, and I don't do drugs. Like, I'd have to, like, be drunk <laughs> to do it, but it's crazy that I get so many offers like that. So OnlyFans has kind of changed everything in the sense of we get to – um we get to advertise to the world. And there's a lot of wealthy people in the world who see you and want a night with you. Yeah. What you're doing, if you, if you continued for another five, 10 years, you could make enough money for the rest of your life. Yeah, exactly. You won't need a man, you won't need no, retirement, I don't need, you won't need anything. Exactly. Um, and I didn't what, what, see what the scope about, of it at the time. What is it, what is it about what you're doing that you like? <sighs> is it entertaining men or is it making a lot of money? It's the freedom. And it's the fact that I have this audience. So I'm, I'm a very unique OnlyFans creator. So once a week, I literally get on stream and I talk about like metaphysics and like break down. Like I really, and I have like a fan base now. Like we have a discord group for other really intellectually curious people. We have like a book club. We like, it's very, I know it's very weird. And I didn't even mean to do that. Are you naked when you're doing this? No. So what I do is on Monday nights, I do an hour and a half like wearing clothes and I talk about like anything like free will, like just the most like philosophical because I love philosophy and psych. So a lot of topics like that. And then right after I go to OnlyFans and get butt naked and like do a live orgasm right after. And I've had so many fans reach out to me like this is really strange. Like I feel guilty jerking off to you now because I feel like I've seen it. And I love when people send me that because it's just, I'm like, why? Like, and then they're like, yeah, you're right. And then once they get exposed to it a few times, then it becomes normal. It's just people aren't used to seeing like, I, I wouldn't say OnlyFans creators are porn stars, but whatever, I'm gonna use it. like porn stars in any other context other than like sexual arousal and whatever. So one of, I think the reasons OnlyFans is popular and it is what it is because, you know, everyone's like, oh, porn is free. Why would anyone pay for it? Is because they like the person and they feel like a connection to the person or they think the person is really cool. And a lot of my fans like feel that way. And it's still so hard for people because of the ideas we have around sex and, you know, the societal attitudes towards it and what we've been taught, the shame. People see sex as something, oh, I do it like private and blah, blah, blah. So when they're like, wait, I just had like a great discussion with you on live. And then 20 minutes later, like I'm seeing you naked and I'm horny. Like they don't know how to deal with that because it's so new and it's novel. But seeing so many people reach out to me in that way and then come back a few months later and they're like, wow, now I feel fine with it. Like now it's so normal to me. Like now I don't know how I felt that way before. They're, they're assuming a girl that would do what you do when you're naked is a bimbo. Yeah, they assume I'm not smart. They assume that I don't have any other talents. I mean, that's the number one thing. Like if I'm sitting on live like this, people are like, you probably don't know how to read a book. It's like, I have probably read more books in the past month than you have in your life. But <laughs> you know, um, it's, I break those stereotypes and expectations that so many people put on sex workers that it's very even people who are supportive like supportive of sex workers it's still so hard for them to 
um, actually like deal with it sometimes. Or um, so, so yeah, so that's why, it was one of the reasons I do it. Cause what, I'm what, like- I mean, so I understand some of the reasons you do it. Yeah. And the upside, what, what are some of the downsides of what you do? Of OnlyFans? Um, so there are a lot that could be downsides for others that I don't think are necessarily downsides for me. So I have a lot of like younger girls that see what I'm doing and how much I'm making. And they're like, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. And I'm like, I don't think you're cut out for it. Like you get a lot of hate, um, especially for someone like me who came from like the most respected profession. You get a lot of hate in... And because of what I do. Where, where, on Reddit or? Um, not Reddit, because everyone's on Reddit to look at porn, but like Instagram, um, any anywhere where it's not for porn, <laughs> I get a lot of hate. Oh, I see. A ton of hate. And I actually think I get more hate because of my story. That enrages people. Like if I go on Instagram and I'm just like shaking my tits, I may get a few comments like, oh, what does society come to? Whatever. But if I go online and I'm like, hey, guys, the reason I went from being a lawyer is to this is because I didn't want to work people in it enrages people that i had the background i did and i'm a lawyer and i had this well-respected profession and i chose to do this it pisses people off to no ends why, because why, why do you think that is because i'm embodied so many of us live the lives we live because we feel like we we're supposed to and so not only am i challenging that because it's like most people if you don't like, it's like the parts of life that most people don't like, like having a job, not having a nine to five. Like I say that and they're like, you're the worst person ever. Life is all about working yourself to the bone. I'm like, you don't actually want to be doing that either. But you're seeing me have this opportunity to not do that by breaking a societal norm, by being an example of what it means to live life on my own terms and live a life conducive to my own happiness by stepping out of line. And that scares people. That makes people really uncomfortable. It makes people really uncomfortable when you almost, I wanna say it's a social contract, but in a sense, it's like, okay, this is what happens. And people like to categorize people. And so you hear this a lot, oh, sex workers, they're all abused, they're all damaged, they all have, so I get all the time. Even sometimes people that are just curious, hey, you're really smart, why do you do this? Like, it's like, this is seen constantly as a last resort. And for a lot of women, it is. But for me, it was a first resort. You, you would because never I be could have done anything I wanted to do. You would never be able to make the money as a lawyer that you're making. Yeah, and that's another thing people don't understand is people are like, oh, what are you going to do in 10 years? I'm like, be retired. Like, <laughs> like you know, um, so it, the money is part of it. But it's the fact that I'm choosing to do something so that's so stigmatized and I'm so open about it. And I'm so, I don't give a fuck that a lot of people, it enrages people. And they, they constantly are like telling me, oh, they're like waiting for the other shoe to drop. I get so many messages like, well, you, well, okay, fine, but you're going to be lonely forever. Nobody's ever going to like you in 10 years. You're going to be, you're going to be working at Taco Bell. And it's like, okay, it's like a revenge fantasy they I'll have because they're get, unhappy with their life. I'll, I'll bet you get marriage proposals all the time. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I don't even, marriage isn't even something I'm really into. No, but, but like, I mean, you're, yeah, guys but are crazy. They're too, like, sure. and then it turns into, well, no, res, well, res, ma, uh, self-respecting man <laughs> would marry you because someone under will comment, like, I'll marry her. And he's like, no man who really respects himself, no high value man. Like you hear this in like the new Andrew Tate Manosphere world, high value, low value. No high value man will, lower. your kids, your future kids I'm like you don't really care. if you cared about kids go go volunteer and you know use your resources on kids that are alive that actually need you today don't worry about my hypothetical children in 15 plus years <laughs> um but that's what they it's like people can't accept that someone may live a lifestyle that you don't approve of or someone got somewhere in a way that you don't think they earned it or they got something the easy way and they might still just be happy and it might just work out for them like People don't like that. They're like, no, just wait till you see her in 10 years. Wait till you see her in 15 years. It's like- You're, you're gonna be depressed. And yeah, you're gonna be drugs. depressed. This is what always happens to people like you. You say that now when your looks fade and nobody wants you because your, your tits are all over the internet. What are you gonna do then? And I'm just like, what if, cause it's very likely that won't happen. Like I might actually just go on and live like a decent life. <laughs> and if that, the thought of that bothers you, like if the thought of me, actually just going on and living a happy and healthy life with people who share my values, because there's billions of people in this world. We all have different values. Like you can go off and be happy with your social conservative values and there are plenty of people who don't hold your values. If that enrages you, why? Like, why does it enrage you? Why does it bother you? If you sit there and you, you don't like me and you don't like what I do and you don't like the decision I made 
And if you're coping by being like, well, she's going to be miserable later, stop and think, what if I'm not? And if that bothers you, reflect. Why? What am I like? You know what I mean? Like, why does me going off and living a life maybe that you don't approve of, why does that bother you people if I'm so, not miserable? People are so uptight about sex. Very uptight about sex, especially because of I, I'm a Middle Eastern. So there's not a lot of Middle Eastern women that do this, and we have more – uh, a more conservative culture. So I get a ton of like people. Well, that's also one of the reasons I'm successful is, you know, Middle Eastern women don't typically do this. And since I do this, I do get, I get a lot of like a lot of my fan base, uh, especially originally was Middle Eastern. So I get a ton of messages like that. But you know what? I get a ton of messages from people being like, hey, I'm gay and I'm Iranian. I'm X and I'm Iranian and you, being so open and choosing to do this and disobey our parents because people, we don't do that. Like we, we don't come from like the Western individualistic culture of I do what I want, my happiness. It's like, no, you respect your parents. You do what your parents tell you. You can't disappoint or bring shame to your parents. That's selfish of you. You're selfish. You're narcissistic. I've heard it all that other creators don't get because of my background. And I get so many messages from people being like, hey, like you inspired me, even out of the Middle East, like I'm bisexual, no one here like understands that. So your story has inspired me. Like those messages mean more to me. It's, it's really funny because people are like, oh, as a lawyer, you could have been helping people. Like most of my job honestly was helping really rich people avoid taxes. But <laughs> um, people are like, you could have touched so many people um, as a lawyer. And honestly, I could have never touched as many people as a lawyer as I have as a sex worker, sharing my story and just being unapologetically myself. Are you, are you happy? Yes. You seem to be. I'm happy. Like, I, I have a good life. So it doesn't mean everything's perfect. That doesn't mean there's no room for improvement. I, it's a lonely profession because you're home all the time and I'm introverted anyway. So I'm, I'm going to ask a question, which yeah. I, I think is stupid, but I, I know the answer. But yeah, uh, as a sex worker, are you lonely because you can't find a good man? No. Yeah, I, I know. No, I know in you can fact, find you of suffer men. from like the paradox of choice yeah, <laughs> because I, I there's think, so I many. Think you have too many to choose from. And something that a lot of people don't realize and, and probably is probably great guys too. Yeah, is like how do I say this? More educated people are less anti-sex work in general. So like you know, academia leans left, and and so the messages I get like you fucking whore, they're not coming from other lawyers or doctors. They're coming from, and you can tell like. I, it's so crazy how much of a stark contrast I have in the grammar spelling of like my hate comments. <laughs> like I think there's like a 4% success rate in using the correct form of your right. in those yeah, versus that. like the messages that are like, you know, other people, other lawyers, I get messages all the time from them like, you made it out. Like, that's amazing. I was on a podcast with a couple attorneys not long ago and they're like, we actually saw your story on the attorney page and all the comments were positive. Like even people who are, may have like hold more conservative values themselves, they don't see, like, they're not like you fucking whore. Like they just don't think like that. So there's actually a lot of really intelligent, great men who have no issue with what I do. Like I've I've dated in the past couple years and not, there was one guy and even him, like, he just, I was like, I had an unconventional career shift. And he's like, don't say OnlyFans. And I'm like, OnlyFans. And even he was just like, st he still is on my ass. And I just don't talk to him because I'm like, I don't like how you responded to that. And this was who I was even before this. So when the guys would tell me before I had this, like, oh, you don't have an Instagram? That's really cool. Like, a lot of girls that look like you are usually showing off their bodies on Instagram. And this was when I did it. wasn't showing. I, I didn't talk to those guys. Because I think f f part, romantic love should be largely centered around people who share your values. And so even though I wasn't personally engaging at this at the time, these were always my values. I never correlated sexual purity or modesty to morality ever. And so it's not hard to find other people like that. And that really enrages people because people are like, oh, nobody's gonna like you. Like, really, you're speaking for billions of people on this earth? Like, you think everyone thinks like you? Like, we're in a culture war 24 seven in this country. Like. How, like we're completely split on what our values are and what we believe. So no, uh, it hasn't made dating hard. Um, the only thing that makes dating hard is the fact that I barely leave my house and it's hard for me to. <laughs> so, so tell me about the reality of OnlyFans. Cause a lot of people think, oh, you put up some naked pictures and you make a ton of money. It's a, it's a full-time job. Right? It's a full-time job. And I, and I want to say that one of the other hardest things about this job is um, 
with being a lawyer, like I said, it's so respected. Everybody, like, it's like the whole world is working toward for you. With OnlyFans and sex work, it's like the whole world is against you. And it's not just people, it's the platforms. We're constantly deplatformed. I've been banned on TikTok more times than I can count. And it's not necessarily their fault. It's the banking pressures. It's the app store. Like we are constantly under threat of Reddit banning explicit content, of Twitter banning explicit content, of OnlyFans banning explicit content. Not because they want to, but because Visa, MasterCard, we're having this big like anti-porn push from the right um, who's like, oh my God, the children. It's always the children. Oh my God, children. So I don't know how much you know about like the 2018 legislation that Trump helped pass the SESTA-FOSTA, which got rid of Backpage um, and did nothing to stop trafficking. In fact, trafficking's worse now. All it did was prevent sex workers from having a safe place to, I guess, advertise and, you know, whatever. And so that is still, you know, we have states now where they're making you upload your ID. I don't know if you heard to like watch porn. Um, yeah, there's a few states now that you have to like, that's why Pornhub is like on strike and they won't go into those, they won't, um, you can't like access, like I think it's Louisiana, a couple others where you can't go to Pornhub. If you try to go to Pornhub, it's like the, one of the people that work at Pornhub, like contact your con Congress member, whatever, <laughs> because they're passing these laws, um, all under the guise of stopping trafficking and child safety, which it's not actually contributing to. Um, but I mean, that's a whole other topic I could go on and on about, but that aspect of it, I didn't expect, like I didn't expect, like I come from law where people are hustling, like type A personalities, but I have never seen hustle till I started seeing what OnlyFans girls do and online sex workers do, never. Like, first of all, they're so kind. They're always willing to like, and I can't speak for everybody, but at least in my experience, like there are threads that I would go to. I remember my very first day, I was like, I reached out to this girl that I saw was doing well on Reddit. And I'm like, hey, this is my first day. And she spent so much time giving me advice, posting me for free. Like when the whole world is against us, we do have like a kind of like a sisterhood that that's been really great to find in like the OnlyFans community. And OnlyFans I think is really unique because it's brought in a lot of people into sex work like myself that wouldn't otherwise be in it. Like your local barista now has an OnlyFans. If like, OnlyFans wasn't around, you wouldn't be doing porn. No, I wouldn't be doing any form of sex work. I would make no money as a stripper. I hate sweating, I'm sweating now. <laughs> um, I would never, no. So OnlyFans is like created a way into the sex industry where you're literally like, okay post, 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 like from your room. So like, tell me what, tell me what the reality is of your week. You're, uh, you're shooting oh. how often? Depends. So like Mondays I have the streams. I always, I do, um, I always have a longer form video for OnlyFans every other day. There's a friend that I shoot my sex scenes with now. So like every how, how, month. How long is a long form? Five to 10 minutes. Um, and we meet up like once every month or every other month and I try to shoot a bunch of sex tapes at that time to put out later. I have my posts. I try with, to with, with another person. Yes, with a friend. Um male or female? Male. male. So I and that's something is another misconception. Like I'm actually very sexually reserved when it comes to in person, like actual contact. Like the internet's really easy for me. But I have people that message me all the time like can you can we collab? I literally can't have sex with someone that I feel like no do you feel like when you're on camera, you're acting? No. And that's one thing about me. I could be making so much more money if I was willing to open myself up to collabs and just having sex with people to post on OnlyFans, but I can't do it. And I don't want to ever do something I'm uncomfortable doing. And so even when I started, I only did what I was comfortable with. And I, it's very easy for me to say that because I was privileged in the sense of like, I didn't need the money. I was just doing it to do it. And now that I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm doing well, but I could be doing so much better if like, even girls are like, do you want to collab? I, I'm like, I would feel so awkward. So like the friend that I have sex with, we were already having sex. So now we just put a camera in front of it, but that's like me authentically having sex. That's not me shooting a scene. That's not me doing something for my OnlyFans. So, so you're shooting and posting every day. Yes. And and you also go on other platforms to promote. I go on other platforms to promote. Um, yeah, I'm trying to actually get more into doing like social slash political commentary, just because there's not there's not even a lot of women. And I then, feel you, like then you give philosophy lessons. Yes, and breaking down like law stuff like if a supreme court case comes out like my fans will be like hey can you talk about you know this or like 
the affirmative action stuff. And I'm like, okay. So like, it's weird. I literally feel like a law professor sometimes. Like I read more, I have to do research. Like I'm like, how did this become my job? <laughs> like this is not what I expected in a million years, you, but I love it. Do you feel any shame? No. I actually don't. And I think the reason for that, and this is what I would tell anyone who wants to do this, is you have to, I would sit there <laughs> and I would really, and I, I can over intellectualize kind of anything. And I'm like, okay, what is the problem? People keep telling me you don't respect yourself. You don't respect yourself. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, do I not respect myself? Like, let's really unpack this. Like, let's look up like, you know, or objectification. Okay. Objectifying means, okay, so you're seeing someone as an object devoid of feelings. And okay, well, I obviously don't see myself like that. Cause I care a lot about my own feelings and emotions. And I always, I look like I had the biggest boobs in my school in middle school. So I always was like sexy, I guess, in a way. Um, and that never like, it, it didn't make me happier, but it didn't also make me sadder. Like it was just so neutral for me. Um, so, and I never thought my value, cause this is what people, oh, you think all you're good for is, is, and I never thought that. Like, I'm like, I'm a fucking cool person. Like I always thought I had a good confidence. Like I was like, I'm funny and I'm smart and people want to be around me. And yeah, I have big boobs too, but I, I knew I was so much more than that then. And I know I'm so much more than that now. And I don't care if people don't see that. Like I never, so I would sit there and I'm like, okay, no, it's not that I don't respect myself. It's just that you don't respect me. When someone says you have no self-respect, what they're really saying is that they don't respect me, not that I don't respect myself. And that doesn't matter to me. And also because I think about why I believe what I believe so much, when I get those comments, I see it as an opportunity to, okay, you don't like sex work, why? Let's talk about it. Let's duke it out in the marketplace of ideas. So, cause the way you feel, a lot of other people feel, especially in America. And I do notice a stark difference with my fans, depending on where they're from and how repressed they are in the way that they express um, their sexuality and the way they treat sex workers. I, I definitely notice that. Like my European fans are just like, it's like a random Tuesday for them. Hey, how are you? Can you send me this video? And then like after they're done, they're like, oh, that was great, thank you. Just busted a nut everywhere. Okay, bye, have a nice day. <laughs> like super chill, relax. Y Europeans are much more- Oh yeah, but so. Americans are like, hey, like, can I see this? And then they like, then they get their post not clarity, then they delete their profile, everything. They're like, oh my God, fuck, fuck, fuck. And then they come back two days later. It's like this cognitive, um, and, and this has actually been researched with porn addiction, moral incongruence, where they've had like studies where people, they've seen their attitudes towards porn and how they feel about porn and how much they actually watch it. And it's not that people who watch a lot to have this issue, it's because people who think like, God is gonna punish me. You know, those it's, it's are religion that complicates it all, right? Exactly, and being where I'm like, from ethnically and culturally, they have a huge repression problem. So you do see, I see like my Middle Eastern fans, the fetishes they like, cause sex is so taboo for them. So they like want to get extra taboo and then they're super ashamed. Um, you know, they're like, and then they disappear and then they come back and they, they, they can't just like be like, okay, this is normal. Like I have a sex drive. I, there's not a single fetish that you're the only person that has it. <laughs> like people have all kinds of fetishes and OnlyFans is actually a pretty sex positive place for that. Um, something that surprised me is how many people come on OnlyFans or um, like ask me, like, like it's like sex education for them, especially guys who don't have a ton of experience with women. Like I'll go live on there and people are like, hey, what's the best way to like finger a girl? Do, do girls like this? Do you really want a 12 inch dick like we see in porn? And now you're seeing like real everyday women, like no, what you see in porn isn't, like mainstream porn isn't reality. Um, they actually even did a study on this um, that OnlyFans users feel like their sex lives have gotten better because they feel more open. They like to try new things. I have so many couples that watch me together. It's 2023, all different kinds of relationships, people who find me because their wife thought, thinks I'm hot <laughs> or like, you know, all kinds of stuff. What's, so, what's been the biggest surprise since you started? The biggest surprise since I started, and I guess this isn't specific to OnlyFans, but just in general is how, how un, I, don't, I don't know if uneducated is the word, how much people just don't question the narrative they've been told. like how much people are just like, oh no, sex is bad and it's degrading. And I'm like, okay, why? And they don't know why. <laughs> you actually keep 
pushing like they don't know why unless they they're religious and then they can point to like the appeal to authority which like i'm not so i'm like okay that's what you but if you don't have that it's really hard to actually you know and a lot of them aren't even equipped to have those kind of conversations but they don't actually know why they believe what they believe um so i was kind of in this bubble before where i thought like the marketplace of ideas would prevail and good ideas would prevail over bad ideas but then i see the internet and i see the stuff that appeals to people is like stuff that um stuff that like our brains weren't really evolved to like think critically. You have to learn how to think critically. You know, your brain is evolved to kind of when someone um, touches at like emotion or anger or rage. And this is what you see like on Twitter and everything, like the angry, you know, whatever character tweets. And, and this is how people engage with the world. And that's how conspiracy theories get to what they are um, because people don't have this skill. And so one of the other things I learned is how privileged I am and how lucky I am. Um, when I get these hate comments from like these, and then sometimes I'll click on their profile and they're clearly, you know, not very, you know, it's like some 200 pound guy that's like, you know, you can tell he doesn't live the greatest life. I can tell from his, the way he wrote that he isn't super educated, doesn't have, and I'm like, there is no reason that I'm here and he's there other than just pure luck. I had the background I had. I have the genes I have. I have, um, I didn't choose that, you know? Um, everybody is just working with what they have. And even trying to put yourself in someone's shoes is really hard because you can only really put yourself in someone's shoes as yourself with like your brain and your experience and your insecurities and your limitations and then you're trying to put yourself and be like how would i behave if i'm them but you can't unless you are them um do you ever wonder if you are undermining the society the, the fabric of our morality and society by you, know, you you give such a beautiful oh i'm absolutely undermining and i love that this is such an endorsement for only fans uh, yeah well this is the thing like i i want to do that i think it should be undermined we should be like wait why are we so uptight about sex right why do we feel this way? Why do we shame? The stigma, stigmatizing sex workers doesn't help anybody because a lot of times people are like, well, most of these girls are, you know, like a lot of the girls you interview have these terrible lives and they wouldn't be doing this if they had any other choice. And I'm like, okay, so why are you calling them these names? Because it's not helping those women when, when you talk this way about sex workers, when you say, when you call it all this stuff, because that's just making it harder for them to come out there. They have more shame now. They have more guilt now. And it's also, I make this point too. I think I think there are plenty of women like me who are would be much happier doing this that are working some shitty job they hate with a, an abusive boss who aren't doing this because they're so afraid of that stigma. So I don't think it's making anybody happier. Um, and it's definitely not helping those women that you purport to care about. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think seeing you talk so freely about how successful you've been and how, how Easy, this not easy. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's yeah, it's come to you very nicely, and you're going to be set for life. Yeah, I is going to change a lot of girls. I feel a lot of women's views. I feel a one. I feel like I can't fail. Like I have to keep going, and because I, I feel a pressure, but I also feel a responsibility. Like you can't really just come into this world and take the money and leave. You need to do more. You need to serve this community because you are in a position and many other women aren't in this community aren't to actually help. So that's also something I feel. So my, if I had like my ideal life, yeah, I would retire in five to 10 years and then spend my time, you know, just kind of saying fuck it and do what I can to help. I feel like you, you're like an inspiration for that. Like you do, just kind of. Do, do you wonder if you're contributing to some part of society that's sick because they're, all these men are just, they're staying alone when they're watching you. I, you hear that? And they're playing by the, by, with themselves. And you they, hear that, but I don't, I haven't seen like It's not any, helping them in their relationships with other women. Well, according to the two studies that have been done, really? it, it I, has I with know. OnlyFans in particular. I think OnlyFans is different, like I said. I know very little. Um, also, there was a recent study that came out because people think, oh, OnlyFans users are like lonely, single. They're actually mostly married. I think it was like 62% from that study. I don't remember I the I mean, there's different size. ways of looking at it. You can say that if they're married and they're watching, it's keeping them from cheating. 
I can't, I can't speak. All I can say is the majority of my fans, and maybe I attract these kind of fans because of my personality on other platforms, are super sex positive, so nice, so respectful. Like I said, like sometimes it's just like, I don't. Even, I'm like the grammar, the punctuation, everything, the word choice. Like they're like, good evening, like comma. Like yeah, your your fans are super. I would say that I, I guess I attract that more. I guess. White collar. Well, you're clearly very intelligent. That that, that might that be is what gonna it is. Oh, and I get so many people on there like, "Hey, you're really hot, but you being smart is extra hot," and that's what made me subscribe. But then you get the haters all over Instagram like, "No one cares what you think. Like you're just a fucking bimbo." <laughs> like, no, I don't think that's true at all. Well, yeah, so I don't think that's true either. And I, I mean, from my anecdotal experience, it makes you five times more. more yeah, my anecdotal experience bears that out that people like that. Um, so and. I don't encourage those parasocial relationships. I make it a point not to encourage those in the sense of like, like I said, I don't have like girlfriend experience. Like a lot of OnlyFans creators offer that where it's like, I'll pretend to be your girlfriend for a day if you pay me X amount of money. I'm like, I don't think that's healthy. So it's not healthy pro- for you or prostitute, you, you mean? Uh, no, 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 it's just virtual. So oh, like, virtual. yeah, like there are guys who really wanna pay for someone to like send them a selfie in the morning and pretend to be your girlfriend. That's oh, like geez. a common thing. and. A lot of girls do it and it's a money maker and I won't do it because I don't think it's healthy for them and I don't think it's even, like I don't. Well, AI, it's AI, just is, a, AI is coming, so. AI is coming and people clearly, there's that girl, the Snapchat, did you hear about that? No. The Snapchat creator who made an AI girlfriend version of herself and people could pay a dollar a minute to talk to her um, and she was open about it being AI and she made, made bank off of that, which is really interesting. The world so is I changing think fast. The world is changing, but I do think there is still, people who want to just see real and and that's one of the other reasons i think only fans is what it is is because people were sick of like the you know the oil the tan the crazy like the super fake porn star mainstream porn thing and then now they're like i actually want to see the girl next door i want to see some stretch marks i want to see um like a normal female body. Real real women. Real women. And so like I said, I started on Reddit. There's a subreddit for everything. Chubby, skinny, short, tall, mom bod. People like it all. People like, there is someone for everyone. And like, whether you're tall or skinny or you're thick or you have big boobs, small boobs, everything. There are people into that. And I think OnlyFans allowed like the guys who are interested and women, but it's majority men, to be like, ooh, I really want like the MILF next door. I'm gonna go find like an actual mom who is like doing this where her kids are at soccer practice. Like that's hot to people. Well, I, can, <laughs> I, I can, I'm not, I'm not giving my opinion, but I, I can see how OnlyFans would be good for women who had no other option <clears throat> and they could do something that they can generate money to, yeah. to, to support their kids or their family or their life, parents, whatever. <clears throat> and. Uh, not have to do porn where they, were, they weren't going to make any money. Yeah. Now they can make money. Oh, porn stars are like, they're like, I don't know how much you know about this, but like no one wants to do mainstream porn. They're all like, what the fuck? Why? Especially because of the amount those women get paid. They have no, con- they I, don't I think, own I mean, their content. As, as uh, Jim Sexton said a couple of weeks ago on my channel, <laughs> it's oh. a Betamax. Uh, yeah. I think porn is like a Betamax. And it's they... Obsolete. OnlyFans takes 20%. The money goes directly to us. It's actually the most ethical way you can watch porn because everyone on there is verified. They're super stringent about it because they don't want to lose the their money. The money all goes to you, except for- You actually literally have to have like a bank account in your name. So what, like- What percentage does OnlyFans take? 20. 20. So they take 20, you get 80. But again, you're verified. If anyone else wants to come on, they need to sign a consent form. We need to take a picture of our ID, holding our ID. We're taxed. We're 1099 employees. Um, like I said, our bank account has to match the name. The so like right. all of that exploitation, like I'm not saying it doesn't happen at all, but like a pimp and all of that, like it's very difficult on only, or like so underage. You, you, you do this by yourself. I do this completely by myself. You have no partner, you have nobody taking a cut. No, no manager, I refuse, no, nope, no agency, no managers. I don't think, I'm not saying they're all bad, but I do think that you don't need one. Only fans cut out the middleman. You don't need an agency, you don't need a manager. I literally started like, to this day, I do everything on my phone. I just take videos and pictures and engage with my fans. That's what I do. Yeah, the phones are good enough now that you can produce content. With you your- can, yeah. The the when I film my sex tapes, uh, the guy I film with is has like experience with film stuff, and so he literally just has like some light in his 
the phone. We even shoot those with our phone. And he just kind of sets it up like different angles and we go for it. That's it. You don't need all of that. You don't need someone to promote you. You can do it. They, they have the access to the same social media platforms you do. Like these ma management companies really come and they're like, okay, we're gonna take 40%, but then we'll post for you. You take the picture, upload it in a drive and then we'll, I'm like, wait, I'm giving you 40, you want 40% for posting what I did and in, into a drive onto different social media platforms? Like there's just no reason for it. But especially these younger girls that think like, oh, they told me that, you know, or they sign these contracts that most of them would never actually be enforceable, but, but you, they don't know that. You gotta have the hustle to produce content yeah. regularly. And they come, or I have, cause a lot of people know I'm a lawyer. So I have girls that come to me and they're like, this management thing, I, you know, the, but I signed this contract and I look at this contract, I'm like, this is not an enforceable <laughs> contract. Cause they're like, they're threatening me and blah, blah, blah. And they've been taking 50% and not doing anything. And I'm like, you don't need these people. Cause that's the thing. Anytime there's something where women are making a lot of money in, men come in and they pretend they're needed. <laughs> they pretend, wait a second. Pim we Pimps are everywhere. Yeah, exactly. They're like, wait, 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 wait. You guys are making all this money. Okay, you know, you need me to manage you. I'm sorry, why do I need you to manage me? <laughs> like, what exactly, what, why? Why do I need you to help me take a picture of my body and put it on OnlyFans? What is that? So, um, you, well, you're yeah. a, You're a very business-minded woman. I am and a lot of women are not good exactly money. and a lot of women that do this are like fresh out of high school 18 19 they don't know any better yeah. so that's one of the things I try to like tell because I, I do see those younger girls that are like yeah I just signed with this management agency they're taking 50 percent but they said they're gonna make me all this money I'm like is it contingent on them making you all that money and then two months later they're like yeah they're making me even less money and they're taking half of it and I don't know what to do and they're threatening me and I'm like yeah and a lot of these management agencies are just run by Bill down the street who like was like wait a second I want to because they're trying to hustle too these guys and this is a, there's a lot of money in this sex is I mean look at me I have a, a law license and I could not generate this money my my most lucrative asset is still sex and my looks. Doesn't matter how many degrees I have. And you're still young yet. If you think, if you consider 28 young, <laughs> so I feel like people in this industry think like 30 or expire, which isn't true obviously, but that's no. how they frame it. I'm definitely not like, I think I'm above the average, I would say. I actually, I'm just completely making that up. But a lot of the really at least popular ones are actually like mid twenties, I would say. But you, you can start an OnlyFans when you're 18 and you can imagine for many 18 year olds, they're like, wait a second, I wanna do that when I'm 18 because like, I don't wanna go and um, waitress and whatever for minimum wage when I could just do this. And I'm like, yes, but, and then I, there are things you need to think about. There are consequences for this. And I always go through that with girls. Like some girls are like, okay, I wanna start one, but I don't want anyone ever, I know to see it ever. I'm like, well, you're opening yourself up to that possibility. Like everyone's found me by now. <laughs> like I've had people from high school, just random people be like, hey, I just saw you on Reddit. <laughs> and you have to be okay with that. You have to be accepting of that. If you're like, oh, I want this to be completely secret. You can't have it both ways and make all this money because the more money you make, that means the more exposure you have and the more likely it is that other people are gonna see you. So, right. yeah, it's Let's, been- Ed, Jasmine, thank you so much for enlightening us all. <laughs> of course. Very I'm interesting. such a big fan of Soft White Underbelly. Well, you're, you're gonna have a lot of fans here, I think, after after this video. I hope so. And yeah, I, I'm really passionate. It's about just nice to see a woman thriving. In, in the world. People don't even, think even people- Even if it's something that gets, gets judged a lot. Yeah, people don't think it's possible. Like I guarantee you, even when people see this video, they're like, she must have just not told us about her abuse. She must have just not, because I've seen that sometimes in the comment section of yours. Oh, she's, she's coping. She's, there's something, there has to be something we're missing that can tell us why she did this. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you there really isn't. Like there really isn't. And I challenge everyone to just, you're just a little more sexually free than most people. I'm sexually free and and I was like, okay, people don't like this, people don't like me, but why? Is what I'm doing actually wrong or are they wrong? But I think I think your your stance, whatever you want to call it, your what you're doing ticks off so many people. Oh. Tr triggers all it their It triggers so many people for so many different reasons. Uptight like religious. Oh, the uptight religious people, um it it does fuel some jealousy, like you know, I see that sometimes like especially guys like, wait, 
I can't do that. I wish I could just sit there. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that sucks that you can't, but maybe, like- maybe, maybe gay guys can, I don't know. <laughs> they do, but the, the top earners are mostly women, women. on OnlyFans. Yeah. So they just get one area where women actually dominate and men like lose their minds. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, now there's just so much inequality because I can't take off my clothes and you have so much privilege as a woman da, 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 because of this one area where female females in the adult industry out earn men and are more popular than men. It's like, that means this must, this must go. If men could make as much money as we were, 70% of y'all would be butt naked <laughs> on OnlyFans tomorrow. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. All right, Jasmine. Thank you so much. Thank you.